Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about the latest news and trends in the stock market. Today we're going over a video from CNBC and this video provides some really good insights from a couple of experts and provides some good ideas for the rest of the year. Let's start with this news from Wells Fargo's Chris Harvey. He advises to sell before May and go away. He expects a 10% correction soon. His advice is based on the phrase, sell in May and go away. You might be wondering to yourself, what does that really mean and why do they say that? Let me explain this a little more. According to the data from YCharts, the S&P 500 monthly return for May 2022 was 0.01%, which means the stock market was almost flat for that month. However, this does not mean that May is always a bad month for the stock market. In fact, in May 2020, the S&P 500 rose by more than 6%, and in May 2021, it gained 0.55%. The historical pattern of sell in May and go away is based on the average performance of stocks from May to October, which is usually weaker than the other half of the year. However, this pattern is not reliable and can be influenced by many other factors, such as economic conditions, earnings reports, geopolitical events, etc. Therefore, you can't base your investment decisions solely on the month of the year. Now let's talk about what is in this video. The experts will be talking about the two best months of the year, the impact of earnings on the stock market, and give you some insights on some stocks and the mega caps. Please let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments below. Now that we got the summary out of the way, let's check out this video. It's been a good day led by Caterpillar today, but technology is lagging. Consumer discretionary is a bit weak. The VIX is at 18. Oil is at 81. All right, Jenny, so we're waiting on tomorrow morning. They just laid out for you what Goldman Sachs is talking about in terms of the print and what it could mean for stocks. And I'll go through that again in just a minute. But are we waiting on that in the morning? And that's the biggie? I think so, but I also think it's a lot of what we were talking about when I was on Thursday, which is starting to move away from inflation. We know that it's cooling. We know that it's going to be persistent, right? We know it'll be in the 6% range still, which is higher than the Fed wants. And I really think that what's going to eclipse everything else is earnings. So I, so what we're looking for that, I think what comes out of earnings is going to be much, much more important and much more telling because it really is time to start looking forward. It really is time to start saying, what, when are earnings going to recover? What's 24 going to start to look like? I know that's early, but I think that's where the, where the investor lens is starting to head. So Joe, you know, Sarah went through what Goldman Sachs just put out, <clears throat> excuse me, before we came on the air in terms of the kind of print that you may get and then the kind of reaction you may see in the stock market. So let's recall, February was 6.0, okay, 6.0% on headline. They say if you get greater than 6, you're going down 2% on the S&P. Between 5.2 and 6, you're going down. You're going down 1% to 2%. If you get between 4.6% and 5.1, you get 50 to 100 basis points of a rally in the S&P, and then less than 4.6, the outlier read, you get a more than 2% rally. You want to you wanna take that on at all? I mean, it all seems very logical. Uh, statistically, I don't, I don't know the accuracy of it, but certainly directionally, it seems to make sense. I, look, I, I think we're about to go into a hailstorm where there's just going to be an abundance of data that's going to come at us from inflation tomorrow to retail sales on Friday to the earnings reports that are going to begin on Friday through the remainder of the week and the intensity of the 24th to the 28th. It's a hailstorm. To see if there's sunshine on the other side of the hailstorm or not. I still look overall at the market and I still see charts that look pretty good. I see moving averages that are actually turning up, which doesn't seem logical given where a lot of the research notes are right now and how positioning is. You know, some, Bryn, have tried to get a little more positive on the market of late, but Wells Fargo's Chris Harvey is not one of them and he's not waiting around either for what the print is tomorrow. He says sell before May and go away. I referenced that at the top of the show here. We are within spitting distance of our 4,200 S&P target. He says now shifting direction. Expect a 10% correction in the next three to six months, a front end inversion, a 7% year to date run and a banking crisis that will likely take an e economic toll triggered our reversal. You want to weigh in on this Harvey call? It's time to sell now. Don't wait for May. Well, that's definitely a dour outlook. I mean, Let's look at seasonality. First of all, the two best months of the year are April and December. We got though in the first quarter, the information, you know, the NASDAQ was basically up 20 and we can go, we don't need to go through all the tech stocks that are up 30 to 70% year to date. And so I think 
In terms of the mega cap tech, which is still so much of the S&P, we have pulled forward so much of 2023's gains. So I think that makes sense, right? To say, don't wait till May. We have pulled forward in general. I think there's areas like energy, maybe some staples. There's other areas that have not participated. And so I think this is more about tech than the broad market. But I also wanted to put a note on CPI. I think, I think you know, Goldman's note is interesting. This is actually pretty simple math. You know, CPI, CPI right now is at 6%. And for the viewers, it really just looked at the last 12 months and then adds those together. March of 2022, May of 2022, and June had prints of between 0.9 and 1.2. So Scott, those are gonna start dropping off over the next three months. So even if CPI over the next three months grows at 0.4 month over month, by June, inflation will be cut in half to around three and a half percent. And so to me, that's a very bullish narrative in terms of there's lots of cross currents, but I do think inflation is gonna drop handsomely just because we're gonna kick off those backwards numbers, which I don't really think people in general understand the simplicity of that. So I definitely think it's more of a bullish note to kind of do a counter against you know, Harvey's bearish bearish tone, which which may be accurate, okay. but I think it's going to be more complicated than just sell in May. I think it's going to be more about sectors and positioning than just sell everything and come back. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Your support means a lot to us.